So this is going to be a demonstration of the knee joint, the interior of the knee joint and the surrounding structures from the posterior aspect. This is a prone cadaver. This is the right side. I'm standing on the right side and the camera person is on the left side. This is the posterior aspect of the popliteal fossa. We have removed every structure. This is the upturned reflected gastrocnemius, the medial head, the lateral head, upturned plantaris muscle, and this is the soleus muscle. So this muscle that we see here, this forms floor of the popliteal fossa, this is the popliteus muscle. And we can see it is taking insertion from the posterior aspect of the tibia, right tibia above the soleal line. This is the soleal line. This popliteus muscle as it goes upwards and laterally, I'm going to show from under the structures of the popliteal fossa, namely the neurovascular structures, we can see that the popliteus muscle is moving upwards and laterally. And here we can see it is dividing into two origins. The main origin goes up like this under the fibular collateral ligament and my instrument has gone under the fibular collateral ligament and it gets into the lateral femoral condyle and this is the one which separates the fibular collateral ligament from the knee joint and the other origin is to this structure here this is the posterior part of the lateral meniscus and this portion it pierces through the posterior capsule of the knee which we have opened up and it goes under the arcuate popliteal ligament on the posterior aspect of the knee, which also we have opened out. So therefore, the popliteus muscle has got two origins, one from the lateral femoral condyle, which goes under the fibular collateral ligament, and the other is from inside the knee, from the posterior aspect of the lateral meniscus. The popliteus muscle, by virtue of its origin from inside the knee joint, when it contracts, it pulls the lateral meniscus away from between the femoral and the tibial condyles and therefore it reduces the chances of injury to the lateral meniscus. The other origin of the popliteus which runs under the fibular collateral ligament and gets attached to the femoral condyle, it separates the fibular collateral ligament from the lateral meniscus and from the capsule of the knee joint. And that is why the lateral meniscus is much less likely to be injured, much less likely to be torn. Arthroscopic view of a normal lateral meniscus and a torn lateral meniscus being repaired arthroscopically. Incidentally, we can also see that the fibular collateral ligament is a tight pod and it splits the insertion of the biceps femoris. This is the outturned cut end of the biceps femoris to the head of the fibula and this is the other end of the biceps femoris and we can see that the fibular collateral ligament splits the biceps femoris and gets attached to the head of the fibula. The action of the popliteus, when the knee is extended, not weight bearing, then it rotates the tibia 5 degrees medially. When the knee is weight bearing, then it rotates the femur 5 degrees laterally. So therefore, popliteus muscle acts on rotation of the knee 5 degrees only when the knee is fully extended. So that is one of the actions. It also helps to lock and unlock the knee. Now let's take a look at another structure. We see this muscle here. This is the semimembranosus. The semimembranosus, as it descends down, it gets inserted onto the upper medial aspect of the tibia. But we can see it is giving an expansion here. This expansion is the one which reinforces the posterior capsule of the knee joint, number one. Number two, we can see it gives an expansion which also reinforces the popliteus fascia. That also we can see, and part of that we have split here. Number three, we can see it is giving some curved fibers which we have cut. This is the oblique popliteal ligament. And under that was another series of ligament which is also fused with the posterior capsule of the knee joint which we mentioned earlier called the arcuate popliteal ligament. And under the arcuate popliteal ligament, the fibers of the popliteus enter into the knee and get attached to the posterior aspect of the lateral meniscus. This fibers that we see here, this is the posterior menisco femoral ligament which extends from the posterior aspect of the lateral meniscus and get attached to the medial femoral condyle. Posterior menisco femoral ligament is another one of the intra-articular ligaments which holds the lateral meniscus in place. The next structure that we see here is what we have lifted up here. This is the posterior cruciate ligament. The posterior cruciate ligament has got two bands. One band goes a little medially and another band goes a little laterally, the thinner band. This whole thing is the posterior cruciate ligament. The posterior cruciate ligament, it takes attachment from the posterior aspect of the tibial condyle and it goes up and it gets attached to the lateral surface of the medial condyle of the femur. What is the action of the posterior cruciate ligament? When a person is walking downhill, 
there is a tendency for the femur to slide forward on the tibia and therefore the posterior cruciate ligament prevents the forward sliding of the femur on the tibia especially when walking downhill when the posterior cruciate ligament is torn we can elicit it by means of what is known as the posterior drawer sign when the patient is sitting with the knee partially flexed if we can push the tibia backwards if we can push the leg back on the femur that is known as posterior drawer sign and it will be associated with pain that is indicative of posterior cruciate ligament tear in some dissections we may be able to see a little bit of the anterior cruciate ligament here but in this case we cannot see it very clearly the next structure which i would like to draw your attention to and it's rather unique it's not very common is if you listen to me closely here we can hear a bony sound my instrument is hitting against a bony structure under the origin of the lateral head of the gastrocnemius and we can see i have removed some of the fibers of the gastrocnemius here to show you that and i can we can feel it also very clearly here this is sesamoid bone within the lateral head of the gastrocnemius and that sesamoid bone is referred to as the fabella and we can see that this particular cadaver has a fabella this is a lateral x-ray to show you a fabella a sesamoid bone within the lateral head of the gastrocnemius these are some of the structures which i wanted to show you pertaining to the posterior aspect of the open out knee joint thank you very much for watching Dr. Sanjay Sani are signing out. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Mr. Kendall Kumar Batch is the camera person. Have a nice day.